so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video and welcome to the gridiron. <clears throat> and before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or just leave a comment below or possibly share this video. It would mean so much to me. But just anyway, just thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Well... Stellar performance from the New York football giants. I'll tell you what. Uh, it's same old, same old, guys, isn't it? It's, it's kind of like, um, I had a little sense of like last year, right? Um, you know, things were kind of floundering around a little bit. Like, you know, we went, went on the road. Nobody gave us the chance to beat Seattle. We went into Seattle. I mean, the crowd wasn't there or nothing. But, you know, we, we went into Seattle. We with Metcalf, and, you know, and, and Russell Wilson, and, you know, and we beat them. Not that, you know, the Seattle was a phenomenal team last year, but nobody gave us a chance to win that game. We went on the road. We won it with good defense. We won it with a ground game. We won it with a backup quarterback. Remember Colt McCoy was in there? I mean, I think we had like 110 yards passing or something, but we won, right? I remember, like, the last play of the game when Seattle had the ball, like, Russell Wilson's, like, running for his life, and he just chucks the ball down the field. I mean, we had pressure on him, and, uh, oh, man, I'm so proud of our team. So, it was like, you know, after that game, we came home, and we had two home games, and it's like, oh, man, you know, I'm not saying we were going to win both or whatever, but, you know, uh, you know, we're playing the Cardinals, you know, and, of course, we... <laughs> And then we're playing the Browns, you know, two home games, and we we looked absolutely horrible against the Brown uh, the Cardinals. We lost twenty six to seven, and then we lost twenty to six to the Browns, and that's kind of like what this feels like a little bit. Like two weeks ago, we went into Nolens, and we, you know, place was going crazy and all that. Nolens has a good team, and and we go in there and beat them in overtime, and it's like, oh man, here we go, baby, we're turning the corner. I mean, you know, those first three losses we had. I ain't worried about it. We're on a roll now. You know what I mean? Um, and then we come, you know, then we go next game we play against the Cowboys and get smoked. <laughs> and, and then we come home, we play the Rams, and we get smoked. I mean, I mean, last year was a little different, you know, than this year. I mean, this year I said, you know, I have the injuries. I'll go over the injuries in a little bit, you know. But, I mean, it just has a little feeling, you know, you know what I mean? Um the way it was like last year. And the Giants now they're one and five. No kidding, Jeff. Yeah, but I mean you know, they're seven and fifteen under Joe Judge. Since their last year, since twenty sixteen when they, they were eleven and five and they went to the playoffs, okay. They're nineteen and fifty one. Worst the worst in all professional football. I mean, if you can imagine that. Uh you know. Absolutely unbelievable. They are, since uh, including 2017, you know, so 2017 to now, they're 6 and 30 in September and October. That's a 167 winning percentage. I mean, it's, you know, uh, the season's, <laughs> whether with Joe Judge or anybody's going to admit it, the season's over. I mean, it's, it's, it's a shame. It's just like almost like every year. It's just, I mean, you get a few games into the season. It's like, yep, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. Hopefully, I mean, I think the trade deadline is November 2nd. Hopefully, maybe we can, un you know, I mean, you, you know, the GM, nobody's going to admit it. Yeah, we're going to start unloading guy. And I, I know he's, no, no, we got football left to play. We're going to, you know, that's what you're going to hear. But hopefully, you know, you know, the, the smarter thinking will start, you know, coming forward and, and we'll maybe try to get rid of a couple guys if we can. If we can. I mean, I don't know who's going to want to, you know, I mean, get, you know, trade from Everett Ingram, uh, Jabril. I can't cover anybody. Peppers. I mean, you know, so, I mean, hopefully we can unload a couple guys and maybe get a few more draft picks for next year. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, we have no running game. You know, we had uh, 18 carries for 60 yards, average 3.3 yards a carry. 
Uh, we had third down, fourth down, and one. And can't even make a first down. Both times we got stopped. I mean, you know, the fourth and one, uh, with Daniel Jones sneak. I mean, he was, he was close, but, you know, yeah, we got no, we have no push in, in, in the front there, you know. Um, you know, the, you know we, gotta, we gotta do something, obviously, with the offensive line. We, and then we do need to do something with the defensive line, too. Um, now, the defense, once again, has is, is got to be a record. I don't know if anybody's like, can look at this or whatever or something. It's got to be a record. I can't possibly see how any other defense in NFL history can be so pathetic when they've given up a touchdown in six straight games in the final two minutes of the first quarter. I mean, I, I, it, it's hard enough just to have the other team get the ball in the final two minutes of the first half, okay, in six straight games. All right. But this is the sixth game in a row. The defense has given up a touchdown in the final two minutes of the first half. Unbelievable. Absolutely unfreaking believable I mean, the game was a little out of hand anyway, but, I mean, just, just, just pour it on. Another touchdown in the final two minutes of the first half. Uh, of course, then we had, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the injuries keep just keep piling up. I mean, I, I, I don't even remember watching a, a game first. I don't even remember, like, another team guy from, you know, I mean, I'm sure I'm overlooking some, but, I mean, was there anybody I can remember that? On the other team, like actually even limping off the field and then during any of the games. I mean, have you seen anybody on the, even sneeze or cough or, or anything? I mean, every every time somebody's down, it's a giant. I mean, oh, the, he's down. Oh, oh, they're talking about, yeah, he's out for the game. Yeah. Or, I mean, this time he had the C.J. Board. I, oh, I already broke his arm. He's out for the season. <laughs> had, a, had a nice uh, uh, return, 37 yards, and broke his arm. Uh, Andrew Thomas, you know, he went in there and then, you know, he was out and, you know, after that, Nate Solder, he got hurt. He came out and he came back in and, you know, he, he looked like a turnstile. Uh, uh, Matt Parent went in there and now we know he, why he's been a backup all the time. I mean, because, you know, he didn't look so good at all. Uh, Nate Solder first played the game. I mean, he just looked like a turn. He was just like backed up and I think uh, Leonard Floyd just ran right past him. Sacked Daniel Jones fumble, and of course it's all in Dan. Daniel Jones fumble ball. Well, you know, if you had a 270, 80 pound guy running at you, hitting you full speed, yeah, you might fumble the ball too. Yeah, you know, it's Daniel Jones. No, it's it's we can't block anybody. Okay, I mean, what an absolute freaking joke. Uh, then of course Kadarius Tony had three catches, made guys miss all over the field, this, that, and the other thing, right? And then of course he winds up limping off the field. I mean. It's just, it's absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. There's no other, there's no other team in, in, in football, okay? You know, if you take out, they're starting running back, right? <clears throat> um, like, I mean, like, like, like just look, look at the, uh, let's just let's take the Bucks for example, right? Put Tom Brady in there, okay? But take out his uh, left tackle, his left guard, and his center. Put backups in there. Uh, Leonard Fournette. Oh, you got your backup in there. Um, the, Gronkowski's not in there. Okay, so that's good. Okay, but then uh, take out Goodwin uh, and uh, Goodwin and um, uh, Godwin and uh, let's see Evans. Give me Antonio Brown. All right, so he's got to he's got to he's got to try to score. Okay, with uh, Gronkowski's backup, uh, uh, Cameron Brait in there. And, um, and Antonio Brown and a couple of the backups and the running backs back up, the backup left tackle, backup left guard, backup set. I mean, I mean, he'll, he'll win some games. He won the Super Bowl. There's, there's nobody. I mean, you go to, go to the Cowboys. They, they, they won again, you know. Um, you know, take out Ezekiel Elliott. Take out Tyrone Smith. Take out Zach Martin. Take out their center, right? Uh, give them Schultz. Take out, uh, give them, you know, uh, Gallup's not in there, so give him Wilson and take out A B C D Lamb and Amari Cooper and see how many, how many, see how many football games they might win. Not, yeah, they'll win. They'll win a couple. They ain't win a Super Bowl. They probably won't have a winning record. I mean, there's nobody who can. You know, I said teams will they they will win some games, okay? Because you know, 
um, you know, they maybe have a good defense or whatever. So some teams will win games. Nobody's winning a Super Bowl with the, the injuries that the Giants have. It's it just, you know, it's just one of those years. It's what are you going to do? I mean, you know, you know, Kenny Galladay's out. Then you got, um, you know, Barclay's out. Darius Slayton's out. Uh, Darius Tony's out. You know, um, you know, if you need to be in a pinch, uh, C.J. Board could be, uh, you know, a, a wide receiver. Not that, you know, really want him in there, but, you know. Um, yeah, but I mean, so basically on the field, we got like, you know, Sterling Shepard, who did good. He had 10 receptions, okay? But he dropped a couple passes, too. All right. But, um, you know, the, 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 I mean, like, I mean, we got Dante Pettis out there. We got John Ross out there. We got Devontae Booker running routes out there. We got Colin Johnson out there. We got Kyle Rudolph out there. We got Elijah Penny out there. You know, as I said, C.J. Board, if we need him. I mean, any of those guys scare you? I mean, John Ross has got speed, but after he, he, he's he got that one touchdown reception, okay, after that he's been kind of quiet the past couple weeks, right? I don't even know, I didn't, I didn't even caught a pass last week. I think he maybe caught one pass against Dallas. He didn't catch any this week. He's been kind of quiet. So, I mean, once you do one thing, now it's on film. Now it's like, oh, all right, John Ross, he does that. Okay, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll take that away from him. Okay, let's see what else he can do. And he can't do anything else. So the guys that the Giants got on the field, Ain't scaring nobody. Evan Ingram's catching balls, but I don't know what, what kind of routes they got him running. I mean, he's, he's averaging like six, seven yards a route. I mean, that's all he, I mean, he, what? Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, my God. I mean, you know, the Giants don't have anybody that can really scare you. I mean, Sterling Shepard, you know, he, he goes and sits down and routes. He, he gets, you know, he you know, gets some, some yards, gets some catches, gets some short receptions and all that, but he's, he's not scaring anybody, you know? Every, anybody we got that can scare you is all hurt. Yeah. Um, you know, there's that Shepard had 10 catches for 76 yards. He had 10 catches. That was fantastic. But he, you know, 76 yards. Kadarius Tony last week had 10 catches for 189 yards. That scares you. All right. 10 catches for 76 yards. Don't, uh, yeah. Right. Kadarius Tony had three catches for 36, like on the first, I think the first drive, which I led to the field goal. That unbelievable. The Giants actually led this game 3 0. Hard to believe. Now, it's, you know, the season's, oh, you know, pretty much all over with. It's, it's kind of hard to evaluate, especially like on offense, like, you know, the, the talent when, um, you know, with all these injuries. You know, you, you do know that, you know, I mean, you know what you got with. Andrew Thomas, you know, with uh, Saquon Barkley and all, you know, you know what the talent can do if it's healthy, okay, that, you know, but you do have some question marks with the offensive line, you know I mean, like Nate Solder, my God, I hope, I hope he's gone after this year, <laughs> oh, Matt Parrott might be a, a, a backup, permanent backup, uh, if, you know, it, I Nick Gates going to come back, he's going to be healthy, you know, Shane Lemieux, hopefully come back and hope we can get him in, in there. Well, Hernandez, probably not going to want to maybe sign him. So we're going to need, you know, we're going to need, you know, we're going to need a right tackle. We're going to need maybe somebody to take Will Hernandez's spot. We're going to need a center. We're going to need at least two offensive linemen. And we got to get him in the draft. What Dave Gentleman said when he came in, and he's right, you know, it's a big boy game. You got to start in the trenches. He's right. You can't, these shiny new objects, shiny new toys and stuff like that. I mean, as you see, we got Kadarius Tony. Well, that's great, but the, you know we can't run the ball, we can't pass protect, we can't stop the run, we can't get pressure. Other than that, we're in great shape. You got to build up the the defense and the offensive line. What we got to do next year in the draft, you know, out of the first, you know, first round, the second round, we got to get like, you know, two offensive linemen, and and and, and they have to be correct, and they have to be worth the pick. They have to be, you know. We have to be spot on with them, okay? We need at least two guys, you know. And then, of course, then you got to get some luck. You know what I mean? Because it's, it doesn't matter what you do, how, how, many, how many meetings you have, or how many times you practice stuff, if every time you walk. I mean, look, look, look how Saquon got hurt. He's running, looking away. He steps on somebody else's foot, sprains his ankle, and now he's out. You know, or he's out for a couple weeks. I mean, when you're screwed like that, guys, you're just screwed. It is what it is. But the, the, the defense, okay, you know, Leonard Williams had one and a half sacks today. He, you know, uh, yesterday he had a good game, good game. Leonard, uh, 
Dexter Lawrence had uh, the other half a sack. Okay, so Leonard Williams had a nice game. Okay, but, you know, the, 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 the nice games you have sometimes are a little few and far between, especially with $21 million a year. Okay, but what about, like, Logan Ryan, all right? James Bradbury, Adoree Jackson, Jabril Pepper. I mean, you know, some of these, we can't cover. It's unbelievable. And then say, you know, some of the contracts we got. You know, what we, you know, sign Logan Ryan, right? We've got James Bradbury, nice contract. Adoree Jackson, he's got a nice contract. Leonard Williams got a nice contract, you know? Will Dave Gettleman survive? Who knows? I mean, if the new GM comes in, what's he going to do with these contracts? You know, I mean, who, who, you know, I mean, is there anybody on the on the defense you want? You can start building around. I mean, maybe Blake Martinez, maybe Dexter Lawrence or something. But I mean, Zizo Jolari. But other than that, I mean, you know, who in the secondary? I mean, Xavier McKinney. You know. He had two interceptions today. That's fantastic. But, you know, he hasn't had a stellar season either. I mean, <laughs> it's just, just amazing. Now, the you know, the, the, the old line is bad. We got no running game, okay, to speak of. We need to, we, we have to. I mean, whether Gettleman survives or whoever the next year is, we have to get the old line fixed. Have to. And I understand, you know, we lost some guys this year and all and everything. But, I mean, you look, I mean, we got back on. We got Paired in there, got Solder in there. They're not the answer. You know, we got Price in there. You know, he had a, he had a kind of a brutal game there yesterday as well. So, the, def the defensive line. We gave up 131 yards rushing. Uh, last week, we gave up 201 yards to, this, uh, to the Cowboys. The week before that, gave 170 yards up to the Saints. The first game of the year, we gave up 165 yards to the Broncos. We, have, we can't get any pressure, and we, and we can't um, stop the run. I mean, the Falcons didn't get many yards rushing. You know, we did good. The Washington football team, I think, had like 79 or 80 yards, but they were throwing it. But, but you know, Heineke was just walking them up and down the field, throwing the ball. So why run the ball if you, you know, you stand in the pocket with no pressure and just walk, walk the team up and down the field scoring touchdowns left there? You know, it, you don't need to run a game, right? So, I mean, we got to beef up the offensive line, got to beef up the defensive line. And, it, you know, I said, the, the, the coverage is just unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. And then you think, you know, and, you know, Dave Gettleman, you know, he's talking about beefing up the offensive line and the defensive line. And, you know, he came in like the end of 2017, and basically, you know, we're no better off than we were when he, when he took over. I mean, you know, he took over 2017, the year, you know, uh, before he took over, we started off 1-8. 2018, the year he took over, we were 1-7. 2019, his second year, we started off two and eleven. Last year, we started off one and seven. This year, we started off so far one and five. I mean, the way things are looking, I don't know when we're going to win a football game. I mean, I mean, I said, yeah, we we, we can't cover, we can't get any pressure. Matthew Stafford completed 78.6 percent of his passes, and now that's horrible enough. But I mean, you know, the Giants were, I think, were giving up 74% completion percentage in the first five games. So they, it just went up a little bit. Matthew Stafford completed almost 80% of his passes. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, are you serious? The Giants averaged a season low, okay, 3.6 yards per play. I mean, <laughs> I mean, these numbers are just, oh, oh, godly believable. Defense gave up two fourth down conversions. All right, one was um, it was fourth down and at, at the, the goal line, and uh, Stafford went back, hit Cooper Cup, and it was fourth and goal, I believe it was, and Cooper Cup snuck just snuck the ball in. I mean, nobody on a defense could cover Cooper Cup. He was just running wild and freight the whole game. I mean, and my God, it's unbelievable, absolutely ungodly how horrible we are. Yeah. I mean, they did good on, on third down conversions. It was only, I think they were like two out of 11 on third downs were very impressive. Very impressive, the defense. But, I mean, fourth down, couldn't, couldn't stop them, you know. Uh, defense gave up, in the red zone, the defense gave up 80%. The, um, the Rams scored four touchdowns out of five trips inside the red zone. 80%. 
in the red zone. Ungodly. As I said, they gave up another touchdown, the sixth, the sixth straight game in the final two minutes of the first half. Ungodly. Now, last, and then our, our offensive line, all right? Um, last week, Dallas had 18, no sacks, but they had 18 pressures. This week, the Rams had four sacks and they had seven quarterback hits, all right? I mean, you know, you, you give some, obviously, you got to give some negativity toward Daniel Jones, but the guy was getting hit, you know, I mean, and once, you know, once he starts dropping back, that's when you start hurrying the ball, when you don't think you have time in the pocket and you got to hurry up and throw. One time, one of his interceptions, Sterling Shepard stumbled. You know, Daniel Jones was, you know, Sterling Shepard's running, you know, and Daniel Jones is throwing, you know, he's running this way, he throws the ball, boom, catches it and keeps running. Well, he throws it, Sterling Shepard's coming, he throws it, Sterling Shepard stumbles, the ball keeps going right to the defensive man. Sterling Shepard keeps his feet, maybe he catches the ball, Maybe we don't have an interception. You know I mean, so it's just all kinds of things. It's just unbelievable. Now, the rest of the season is pretty much going to be just to evaluate the talent or the lack thereof, shall I say. It's also to evaluate the coaching, like Joe Judge, the coaching staff, uh, Dave Gettleman. I mean, you know, because you, you look, we, I mean, you know, one of the worst things, you know, is that we... We went the girly world, guys, in the offseason. We were just, let's, let's, let's spend money on this guy, spend money on this guy, spend money on this guy, spend money on that guy. And we get, like, nothing in return. I mean, that's even worse. Because John Mara, he hates that. He says he hates to be the, 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 the king, like, in, like, um, in, um, you know, free agents spending. He hates that. You know, I mean, he, he doesn't mind getting a guy here or there or something, but when you're the, like the lead team as far as spending money in the offseason just to bring guys in, he doesn't like that too much. Um, so, I mean, so we're going to have to, the rest of the season, you're just going to have to evaluate. I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be huge for Joe Judge. We're one in five. I mean, it's going to be easy to start losing the locker room. I mean, because whatever, you, 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 yeah, I mean, he's going to come up, oh, we just go back to work, we've got to trust the process, we got to blah, 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 it's, it, that, that's not working. I mean, go back to grinding, go back, just keep trusting the process, well, well, the process is, is you're one and five. If you keep up with the process, you'll be, what, two and ten, and then maybe three and fifth, three and fourteen or something, if you're lucky, <laughs> the way the process, the process ain't working. You know what I mean? So all of this is, you know, after a while, this starts going on deaf ears, all right, so... It's going to be interesting. We got what we got. So we got 11 games left, right? So it's going to be uh, uh, John Mara is going to have to start evaluating whether you know Joe Judge is, is is the guy for the job. I mean, because you know we start we we ended five and three last year, but now we're starting one and five. We started one and seven last year, starting one and five this year. We're getting blown out, absolutely embarrassed, absolutely. I mean, when you got like. On uh, half empty seats to, in the fourth quarter. I mean, it, that's that's an absolute embarrassment. He hates that. Absolutely hates that. And instead, then you got to look at like um, Dave Gettleman. He has uh, this is his fourth season. You know, at the end of the season, you look back and it's you know it's like, are we any better than we were? F you know, four years ago when we took and took over. And the answer is probably no. You know. And we have some contracts, and, and we're kind of strapped for next year. We can't afford to really pick up any more guys because we're kind of strapped for cash. So, you know, this, this might be Dave Goodman's last season. Then you got to also realize, you know, Daniel Jones, is this is this hit, hit for him? Are we going to need a new quarterback? You know what I mean? So, John Mayer's got a lot of stuff to figure out. You know what I mean? Because, you know, are you going to want to? Bring a new GM in, keep the same coach and the same quarterback. Well, you're just going to want to blow the whole thing up. Bring a, co a, co a coach and a GM in, and they can figure out if they want the quarterback, and they not, they get rid of the quarterback, and get their own quarterback. You know what I mean? A lot of stuff to think about. But I mean, I can't see anyway uh, Dave Gellman surviving this season, and um, you know, because we're just <laughs> we're, we're we're not getting any better. As I said, you know, I. I don't know if Joe Judge will be gone, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, you just can't keep saying trust the process, trust the process, and, and expect things to get better. I mean, you see what you got. You are what you are. 
he lost 38 to 11. Absolutely un unbelievably pathetic. Now, the only thing you can get, start looking forward is look for maybe a nice performance here from a giant play or a nice performance there, or maybe a win, maybe somewhere before the end of the season. I mean, something to look forward to. But one thing you can do is like once, like next week, like say the Carolinas beat us like 75 to 2 halfway through the fourth quarter or something like that. You know, maybe you know, start looking at some of the other scores. I mean, just try to, you know, Look at the long picture, you know, like next April when draft day comes around, okay? You want to make sure that you, the Chicago Bears lost, okay, to Aaron Rodgers. So that's good. So now they're 3-3. Three and three. So now their draft pick just got a little, you know, a little, little lower, a little better for the Giants, okay? Um, but, I mean, you got like, um, you know, you want the Eagles. They're not going anywhere. So if they win a few more games, well, good for them. That, that means their draft pick will be worse. The Washington football team, they're not going anywhere. So if they win some more games, that's good. Their draft pick will be worse. Good. You look, look at the Jets. Maybe vote for the Jets to win. They only got one win. Give them, let them get a few more. They ain't going nowhere. Let them get a few more wins. Let their draft pick get worse. Same thing with the Dolphins. I mean, how bad are they? They lost to Jacksonville. Jacksonville's got one win. All right, The Texans got one win. Uh, the game you had today, you had the Texans versus the Colts. Well, they each had one win. Somebody had to win that game for the most part. Let's wind up a tie, but somebody for the most part had to win that game. It wound up being the Colts. Now the Colts have two wins. So now the Colts are behind the Giants in the draft. Or, okay? The only one is that you got the Lions. I don't know if the Lions will ever win a game. I mean, ever. I don't know if the, Giants, uh, the Lions will ever win ever a game. Ever. I mean, they're really bad. But, I mean, you know, just start looking at some of the other scores. And some of those teams that only have one or two wins, hope they win. That way, you know, they, they move higher up in the draft. You know, the farther back or whatever you want to call it. And the Giants' draft choice gets lower and lower. The Giants, now there's four teams, or actually five teams with one win. And the Lions have none. So the Giants, at the absolute worst, have the number six overall pick next year. Okay, so you got that to look forward to. All right, plus then I said, if you can keep getting the Bears to lose, they're, they're no, they're, you know, their draft pick will get lower and lower and lower. Now, maybe if they can go on a real bad run where they lose a bunch of games in a row, they might fall into the top ten. Who knows, okay? And if the Giants can get two top ten picks next year, that would be phenomenal. Maybe out of the top, if we can get something like that, maybe you can get one real good stud player. And then maybe if somebody the team wants to move up, move back, you know, trade that, move back, grab a couple more picks. Right? And help build your roster that way. So, I mean, you know, the season, it's over. Okay? <laughs> but, you know, you, you do have a few things uh, things to look forward to each and every week. Okay? So, I mean, it, you know, next time, <laughs> next time they're losing 38-3 to in the fourth quarter to some team, flip the channels around and see if you can find scores of the other team. And, and hope some of those other teams, some, you know, some teams, you know, want some teams maybe to lose, but you want some teams to win too. And hopefully when next April rolls around, hopefully the Giants will have two nice draft choices in the first round. Because, my God, they certainly could use it. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there. And go Giants! Woohoo!